Hi everyone, my name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and are you ready for some Halloween fun? With just a few framelits, some cardstock, and one everyday household item that you normally throw out, grab your kiddos because we've got some crafting to do. And how cute with just those few items I showed you, are you going to be loving creating these adorable little Halloween characters? So with your little witches in tow, we're going to create this cute little witch character. All you need to do is grab your empty paper towel or toilet paper rolls. If you use paper towel rolls, then you're going to want to cut them in half. But this is just the basic toilet paper roll. And just adhere the green cardstock. This is the sage around. I cut it four and a half by six, depending on if um, I'm, I'm assuming it's a universal size, but just in case the ones in the U.S. are four and a half by six. That's how I cut the paper. And I just wrapped it around and used double-sided tape. You could use any kind of adhesive. So glue, if obviously you're going to use hot glue, make sure you do it and your little kiddos are um, off to the side. So just have it covered. I don't need to show you how to do that because that's pretty self-explanatory. Now what I love, one of my favorite die sets, framelit sets, is the circle framelits. You get eight different sizes in this framelit set, circles that nest inside of each other. I took three different sizes, the largest, sorry, second to the largest that one is, this one and this one. Now this one is optional. It depends on how you want to assemble your hat, but I'm going to show you both ways to create it. So I'm going to take our black cardstock and I'm going to go ahead and run. This is going to be part of the pointed coney area of her hat. So I'm going to put the blade side against the good side of the paper. If you have a paper that is smooth on both sides, it doesn't matter. This is a textured side. It's just a good rule to remember when you're um, die cutting, especially a word or a sentiment. But for this one, it doesn't matter. Um, so I have the this one down here, and I'm going to be able to cut them at the same time. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to cut a ring a hole in the middle of this particular circle because I want to make sure that the cone goes through her brim of her hat. Now that's optional. You don't have to use this one and I'll show you the difference um, later. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that in there. Just make it centered. If I already have a circle cut, I could just lay this in my already die cut circle and run it through. But this is just saves time and you run it through and they're all going to be done at the same time. Okay, I'm going to run this through my Big Shot machine. It's shifted a little bit, so I'm going to use my Maker's Tape. This is our low-tack tape. You could use any kind of washi tape or anything low-tack um, just to make sure it doesn't tear your paper. And if I could find the end of it, that would be even better. Just to make sure it doesn't shift because either static or just my um, heavy-handedness, I seem to shift the dies. So there's that centered. And we'll, there we go. Okay, and that's all the die cutting I'm going to be needing to do for this particular project for the witch. So there's the larger circle. And this is the one that I cut that has the hole through it. A little off center, but you get the idea. That'll probably be the back of her hat. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm going to cut it in half straight down the middle. And this is going to create the cone. Now I'm going to take my fold and form tool, or you can just roll it around a pencil or something. This is something that kids could do. You could just have them roll it around a pencil, not tightly. You don't want to crease it. This is just going to help manipulate the paper so it'll create the cone effect in, the, in her brimmed hat. And then I'm going to take the curvy part is going to be the bottom of her hat. And then I'm going to roll this around. I want it to be the diameter of the opening of that donut I had just cut, just to make sure it just fits snugly in there. It's going to overlap a bit, and wherever your seam is, that will be the back of her hat. I'm just going to want to roll it around. And just kind of bend it a little bit. Well, not bend it, crease it, but just bend it just so you'll make sure that it stays um, in the cone with the pointy, very pointy top. Hat. So it depends on the size of your circle. I could have done a bigger one to create a um, larger point. And I'm just going to make sure it fits through. Not too loose because if the hole's too big, then it's not going to work. So it'll just slide right through. So that should be good. I'm going to take, just to save time, um, hot glue 
I do that off to the side. Hold that down. I don't need the other hat, so that could be someone else's witchy cap. And I'm going to thread it through there at top. Now the other option when I was saying you don't have to have the hole in the center, just imagine this is just a circle without the hole and just go ahead and hot glue it on top. I just like the threaded idea and I thought it'd be fun just to see if it would work and it did. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a little glue just around here, a little hot glue. You could use regular glue, but just to save time so it'll dry quicker, I'm using hot glue. And then just slide this down until it adheres. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue down here on the base. extension cord won't fit too all the way over so sorry you didn't get to see that actually happening and then I'm going to go ahead and slide that down she got a little dust from her flying activity up in the up in the air okay so there's her little cap so I'm going to put that off to the side now I'm going to get going on her curly hair. She kind of looks like me. <laughs> so I had already cut a strip of um, any kind of orange cardstock. This is from our muted collection. And I just started cutting little strips, just kind of spacing it apart. And I'm going to cut it and keep going. Now you do it so you have an empty, a non-cut part in the center. So just cut and leave about an inch or so blank in the middle. So snip, 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 leave that uncut. Now I'm going to take just to mist it a little bit to soften the fibers of the paper because I want to scrunch it up to give her her crazy hair, but I'm going to do it off away from the work area. Just mist it a little bit on the front and the back. And just sop it up with your hand and then you're just going to want to ball it up. This will make it even crinkles. If you want to roll it around, a skewer or something to give it, or a toothpick to give it um, more ringlets. You could do that too, but she won't care because she'll be flying through the air. Okay, so that's ready to go. Just ball it up however much you want to ball it up. And then I'm going to take another piece of the same color cardstock, and I'm just going to do a little strip and this will be her bangs. I'm going to do the same thing. Just a little bit. You want to keep an empty band at the top, an uncut band of um, paper at the top, just so you can make sure. This might be a little too long, but I don't want to have, give her any bald spots and then we're going to miss it also again. And just kind of scrunch that around. This will be something fun for the kids to do since they can ball up paper and get a little wet. Okay, let me get, let that dry off to the side with the rest of her hair. Another little thing that you need to do is you want to do her eyes. So everybody's got a basic um, hole punch. So this is a best basic hole punch that we had when we were kids or at work. I'm just going to do two. This is one that collects on the inside. Oh, it's must have been from earlier. And then you're going to want to do, so put these off to the side. So those will be her eyes. And then for her nose, what I did is I took the same green cardstock that I had. And I laid it on top of a strip of our double-sided foam tape. This is our 3D foam tape. This will give it a little dimension for her nose. And I'll pop it. You could do it with her eyes too, but I wanted the nose to pop out a little bit. But that's the same exact size as I used for the eyes. So I'm going to do two just in case one flies away. And your whole punch will um, punch through that. So that's already going to be, and one is stuck in there, but I only need one. That is going to be um, already sticky because you peel off one side of the foam tape, adhere the green cardstock on top, and then hole punch it and the other side will be an adhesive. So what I'm going to do also, I forgot my blending tool, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the Distress Ink, I believe this is the tea dye, and I'm just going to 
Do you want to have a little bit of a contrast on her nose? Because that is going to be against the same green and it will be not as visible if it's green against green. So just adding a little bit of a rim of this tea dye brown will give you a contrast. Okay, so her hair should be dry. Now what you're gonna do next is you're gonna snip two little slits on the side and that'll give you the area where her hair will slide down into. So you don't wanna go too far. So this is the seam of the, um, the back of the actual witch's body or face. So on the sides of it, I'm going to snip a little sliver or slit and directly across from it, another one. Not too far down, about an inch down. And then I'm going to slide this in. And you can trim it or you can double, you can fold it over if you want. If you fold it over, then you're gonna open up your the little slits a little bit more, just so they'll slide in. But this is something that kids would have fun doing. They could add more hair if they want. They could do her hair a different color. And you, since the paper is still kind of soft from it being damp, it's okay. It doesn't really tear too much. And if it does, it adds more character. And she doesn't care with that wildness she's got. And then you're just going to push it towards the back a little bit. Open up that slit a little bit more. And as it goes down, oops, I tore a piece of her hair off. Sorry, Missy. And then you're just going to push it down a little bit further. And then you can kind of bend these back if you want them to be bent. Another way you could do it is you could wrap it around the back. But if you want her backside just to be um, basic and plain and just the green, you can. So you can either lay that, wrap it around and adhere it. But I like the slit idea. Next is her bangs. You see how much of them I need. I'm trim a little bit of that off. Give her a little haircut. I mean, these would be so cute. Just save all your paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, whatever rolls you have, and then you can use them anytime. You can do it all white and have it in, make a ghost. You can do it in the holidays, and make a reindeer. The possibilities are endless and there's so much fun to create. So I'm just going to trim this off a little bit because this is going to go against the straight edge of her top of the toilet paper roll. And then you're going to go ahead and adhere it down there. Use my hot glue just to save a little time. So if you did reindeer, that would be super cute because then you could use one of your leaf dyes and then that would be the antlers. So just look at your dyes and say, hey, you know what, this would be really cute with. And when you see what I use for the bat, that was a um, that was a little fun technique. So look at your things. If you don't have a hole punch, the center of her eyes could be a, the her eyes and her nose could be some a dye you might have that's the um, center of a flower. So any kind of circle is perfect. So there her bangs are. I adhered it with glue. You could use any kind of adhesive. Now I'm not going to put her features on because I'm not sure how low down her hat's going to go. So, or the brim of her hat. So just to eyeball it, get those little scragglies off. And then I'm going to put and put. I'll use some of our express glue on the brim of her hat. I mean, sorry, the top of her head. And then the brim will sit right there on top. Express glue dries pretty quick, so I want to make sure it stays put. So I'm going to put a good amount on there. And you could just do a whole little town. She could be with her little friends. You could. What you, another thing you could do is do really cute um, different sizes. So if she's got her own little witch family, that would be a cute little scene to put on your mantle. And hold that down a little bit. But like I said, just look at your dyes and imagine the things you could do with this and make them little tiny people, make her little hats a little bit different. It could be a cowboy witch with a cowboy hat, all sorts of things. Just look at your dyes and see look past what you think that they are. If it's a flower, it could be a different shape brim of a hat. I'm going to put some hot glue on here just to hold it down because it wasn't 
drying fast enough. There. Okay, there she is, partially ready to go. Now for her eyeballs, it depends on how close you want them to be together, positioning them on there. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue. Just a little dot. because that circle's so tiny. I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't squirt out too much because I don't want the glue to be seen. And I could have used double-sided um, uh, adhesive sheets too, or um, popped these up as well, but I like them flat so there's a little bit of a contrast and looks cute with her eyes kind of close together. Now I'm going to take the foam tape nose that we'd already done. Position that there in the center. See how good it looks with the contrast? Because if it was a green on green, it wouldn't look awful. But just kind of gives a contrast so you can actually see it. Now I'm just going to take a basic marker and do her silly little expression. And next, lastly, is just a simple piece of white cardstock. And I already have an adhesive backing on it, so it's already going to be a sticker. And that's just going to be her little one tooth that she has. She needs a better dental plan here. <laughs> Peel off the backing. So it's a perfect sticker. If you don't have that, then you can, kids can glue. You can use a glue stick. And kind of find which side is the adhesive sheet. I'm going to have to do that again and start it there. Now I know. Let's give her one more, one more attempt at the tooth. Get an extraction. <laughs> All right. Peel that off. Kind of big she doesn't need a big tooth like that okay stick that little tooth down off to the side and there she is how cute is she now this is her this could be her twin sister whatever you have have their little family outing you can make your cone taller like i did in the original one or shorter like this it depends on how your circle goes how cute is she and I hope your kids had a great time creating this. So much fun. Have all the pieces cut. If you don't want them to do anything with the scissors, just show them how to do it. Have the snips already go to go and let them mist it. Let them crinkle it up. Draw the face. It's so much fun to create all these little fun things ready for the fall holiday. So for the bat with his cute little fangs and his little eyes, I'm going to show you how quickly I put this one together. So like I said, four and a half by six is your cardstock that you're going to um, cut to wrap around a standard U.S. paper towel, uh, toilet paper roll. And I've cut, I don't need to cut the circles for you because I believe you know how that all turns out. So I use the largest circle framelit to cut the wings. And then, just to quickly show you how I created the um, eyeballs, the little ovals, you could take any center of a zero um, die cut that you have or the inside of a D, an inside of a the capital letter O, whatever you have. But I found this butterfly, little thinlet. And I'm going to go ahead and just lay some cardstock. It has adhesive backing. How perfect is that? Just those little two ovals, the really skinny ovals. I thought that was perfect for his little face. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it through the machine. So any of your die cuts, any of your dies that you have that you like the shape of it, go ahead and use that. It doesn't have to be a butterfly. It can just be the bat's eyeballs. It could be a ghost's eyeballs. Cut them out in black. So I'm going to take those out. They already have the adhesive backing, so they'll be ready to adhere, especially because they're so tiny. You will want that. Just pop those out. See how perfect those are? And that's all the die cutting I'm going to do because you already know how to cut the 
circles. Everything else is just free hand cut. So for the actual wings, this is where this comes in. I'm just going to take and freehand how the shape I want his wings to be. So I'm just going to kind of go like this. Still have a little bit orange stuck to my scissors from my other project. <laughs> and there you have it. You have two matching sides. Now what you want to do is, since this part is the negative of what you just cut out, this is the positive, you're going to lay it across. And then you're going to want to cut out that other one so it'll be identical. So you have the two wings that'll be that way. Now what I want to do is just realize I didn't cut them in the center so one's gonna be fatter than the other one and you don't want him to fly around in a crooked pattern. So here I'm just gonna trim it so the circles are the half circles are at least close. So there you got the two wings. I'm gonna fold the pointy side backwards because that's the part that's gonna to adhere to your toilet paper roll on the bat on the back side of the bat. So we've got that and I'm going to go ahead. Here's the seam of that. So I just want to make sure that was the back of my um, bat. So I'm going to put the wings here, put some of my express glue on there. A little bit more to the edge and hold that down. While that's drying, make sure this one is centered and appropriately spaced out for the front of the other one. So that's the position that I want to adhere that down to. So I take my glue, rub a little bit more onto that side. And then I'm going to hold them both down together. So there's the wings that right there. Let me hold that for a minute to dry. Let's see if my tweezers will fit. Yeah, so see the tweezers will lay perfectly. Just hold that there like that. Meanwhile, I will cut the fangs. So the fangs, I'm just going to do the same paper. Find my scraps from my, um, when I cut the eyeballs out of the butterfly. And I'm just going to do two really pointy pieces. They already have the adhesive backing. So I'm just going to trim it down. Two really pointy fangs. Grab another piece that's just as long. Now he's got his teeth ready to go and his eyeballs. Now for his eyeballs, I could draw a black dot but I love this tiny, tiny hole punch. I'm just gonna punch a hole and then the black from his body will show through. So it's gonna be a partial hole or you can do, so I'm just gonna do it off to the side. So if you can see it like that, the black from his actual face is going to show through. So I'll do the same thing on the other one. So he's gonna be looking to the left. Just a little bit off side there. Okay, so his wings are dry and they're ready to go. Get his fangs out of the way. I'm going to peel the backing off and just like the witch you just want to decide how close together you want them, his eyes to be. So there's one eye down, see how the little black dot that I die cut out comes through. I mean, the black from his face comes through the um, little hole that I punched out. Put the other one right next to it. You could have him rolling his eyes, you could have it dead center, however you want it. So there's that ready to go. Actually, let me move it over just a little bit. The beauty of our adhesive sheets is you can position it if you didn't bear down too hard. Okay, so his eyes are ready. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to take a really fine white gel pen and I'm just going to create his silly little mouth. Just however you want it to be. 
I'll get this pin activated again because it's kind of thin. So you see his little mouth? And now I'm just going to take my two little things. And as a straight edge, I'm just going to lay it right there against the bottom of the line I just drew. It's the white against the white, you don't really see where the fang starts and ends. And then one more, but this one didn't get too sharp, so he wouldn't do much damage. So let's get this one a little pointier. I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing. And there we have it, a spooky bat for the Halloween nights and a crazy little witch gal that's going to be passing through and passing by him in the air on her broom. How fun are these? So I hope you and your ghouls and goblins enjoyed making these as much as I did. They were so much fun to create. Whether you're making these, ghosts, pumpkins, whatever you decide to create, be sure to tag us, My Sizzix Story. We can't wait to see what you've created. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.